Question three. Tiddy needs a bookshelf to store her files. She decides to buy a second-hand wooden bookshelf with two shelves as illustrated below, right? So they show this. Okay, my I don't know why my printer is so bad, but here are the shelves, right? A, B, we're probably going to have to find out what those values are. Standard procedure, right? Tells us the area of a rectangle is length times width. You should know that, but we're probably going to have to use that somewhere. Okay, so it says, use the information above to answer the questions that follow. So you would have seen that I haven't spent too much time on the information. The reason being is that often, if you just go read the questions, it helps you understand the information and know what information to use. So 3.1, the top shelf has a thickness of 1.5 centimeters all round. So what that means is it's saying that little bit there, right, which is looking very bad on my printer, is 1.5 centimeters. And that little bit there is 1.5 centimeters and there and there. So it's basically got the thickness of wood, right? Which you would expect because it's not like wood is like paper thin, right? It's a little bit thicker. Like this this um, desk, for example, will have a thickness, right? So then it says, determine A, the outside length of the bookshelf, right? So the outside length, we know that the inside length is 162, okay? So that's the inside length. Now on this side over here, right? This side over here is going to be 1.5 centimeters to get to the outside, from the inside to the outside. Same thing over here, right? So our length of A, right, A is going to be 162 plus 1.5 on this side plus 1.5 on the other side. So basically the thickness of the wood from going from the inside to the outside, okay? All of that's in centimeters, so it's no problem there. So 162 plus 1.5 plus 1.5. Should be able to do that in your head. Oh, I can't even do it on a calculator. That doesn't bode well. <laughs> and the answer is 165 centimeters. Okay, so don't make calculator errors like me. Okay, let's move on to the next question. It says the base of the bottom shelf, right, of this bottom shelf is 4.5 centimeters thick. Determine B, the inside height of the top shelf. Okay, now, so it's basically saying this little bit over here is 4.5 centimeters. We know that that's 1.5 centimeters and that's 1.5 centimeters. Okay, so we've got all these lengths, lengths because we have 40 centimeters, okay, which is that height. I've done this, this 4.5 in the wrong place. It's supposed to be the, the thickness at the bottom there, right? So we've got 40 centimeters, which it says is the inside height of the bottom shelf. So that's the inside height. Then below that is 4.5 centimeters. Above that is 1.5. Then you have B, right? And then you have 1.5. Now it says over here, never ever forget this information here because it helps you, right? Like, so that 162, how did I know it was the inside height? Well, it said over there, I'm not just making things up, okay? 80 um, centimeters, it says is the outside height. So it would take account of the 1.4, the 40, the 1,5, whatever this value B is, and this 1,5, okay? So that's how we're going to work it out. So we're going to say, well, 80 is how much all of that height is together. And I'm going to take off all of those different measurements that I know. And what is left will basically equal B, okay? So I took off the 1.4, I mean the 4.5, which is at the bottom here, right? The thickness at the bottom. Then I took off the inside height. Then I took off the thickness of the shelf. Then I took off the thickness of the shelf at the top. And then what's left is basically whatever height would be the height of the top shelf. Okay. So these sort of questions are quite intricate um, and they're fairly common. So it's a good thing to practice them um, and make sure that you sort of work through the steps quite slowly and try to visualize it. It's very helpful if you visualize it. So if we do that, and I put that all into my calculator, I'm sure you saw that there, right? My answer would be 32.5 centimeters. And then you can just say that equals B, just so that you know um, what you're talking about. So you'll see from question three onwards, it gets slightly sort of uh, more difficult. It's not as easy as sort of just face value. You have to use it a bit better. If you're concerned about the visual of this, right, your paper will be printed nicely. Um, my printer just is like on strike. So, so just note that so don't be too stressed about visibility let's move on to 3.2 the total outside height of the bookshelf is 31,496 inches okay determined rounded to two decimal places 
the conversion factor for the height in the form one inch equals so many centimeters. Okay, so it's saying the outside height, we know the outside height is 80 centimeters, okay? So we know that 31,496 inches, right, is the same as 80 centimeters, okay? Now it wants us to make this one inch, okay? That's what it's literally said. So how do we get from that number to one? Well, we divide it by itself, right? Remember, that's a trick with maths. If you divide anything by itself, bar zero, you get to one, right? Zero divided by zero is a conundrum, right? Um, but let's do this. So you divide it by, it's, oh, why, am I, why am I dividing by itself? I literally just told you that it's one, <laughs> right? Um, what we do to the one side in a ratio, we must do to the other side. So do it over here as well. So you say 80 divided by 31 comma 496. And that would be your answer. Now, I'm just going to write it like this. Now, why am I writing it like this with not, without writing all those decimals? Well, it specifically said, please write to two decimals. So I did what they asked me to do. And that's a very important part of exam technique. Do what they ask you to do. So... Um, over here, two decimal places. Remember when it's two decimal places, we look at the third decimal. We say, is that decimal below five? If it is, you then round it down. In this case, it's zero. So it's actually really easy. And that's our answer there. Okay. So let's move on to the next question, which again is a fairly common question, but a question that students sort of, sort of struggle with. So let's make sure that person's not you. It says, Tiddy bought the bookshelf at a discounted price, we love to see it, because the backboard, which covers the entire width and height of the bookshelf, so backboard is basically, as it says, the backboard, so here would be the bookshelf, right, so the books, there's your bookshelf there, and basically at the back, right, to make sure the books don't fall out the back, you put in this backboard, right, um, which covers the entire width and height of the bookshelf, needed painting, okay? So obviously she's gonna paint it, right? She, she decides she needs the following. So she's gonna remove the backboard off the bookshelf and she's gonna paint the back of it with a single coat and then the front of it with two coats. So together we have three coats, right? And that's, you need to make sure that you're keeping account of that. Nail the, and then she's gonna nail the backboard to the bookshelf. Okay, so she's doing the most here. Then it says, okay, calculate in centimeters squared the area of one side of the backboard. So now the backboard is not just going to be the inside width, right, and length, or inside width and height. It's going to be the outside, because remember, it's going to go around the whole of the back. So what are the outside dimensions that we have? Well, we know we have 80, right, because it told us 80 was the outside. And then here, we also have A, which was 165, which is the outside length. So... We're going to say area equals length times width. And we're just going to put in brackets for ourselves so that we know what we are working with outside. So my length of the outside was 165, which I calculated up here, right? And then my width or my height, right, is going to be 80, right? So basically saying the two dimensions, right? The two dimensions. And remember, when we're working with two dimensions, what is what is the um, value here? What is the unit, right? It is centimeters, just to remind yourself. Pop this in your calculator, 165 times by 80. And your answer is 13200 centimeters squared. And remember, when you're working with area, you always have to put that exponent there because that indicates that it's an area and not just a dimension. Okay, so don't lose marks on that. Next question is one that students get wrong all the time. It says, convert the answer in question 3.3.1, you wouldn't have thought that was a difficult thing to say, to meters squared, right? Now, what students do is they're like, oh, there's just 100 centimeters um, in a meter and they divide it by 100. No, right? There are two dimensions. Each of those dimensions have to be adjusted to be in meters. So we're going to go from this step here and we're going to say, what is 165? centimeters and meters well it's 1.65 what is 80 right in meters right so we've basically gone from centimeters to meters and to do that we divide by 100 so you're dividing each of these right by 100 okay and um, that's divided by 100 that's divided by 100 so now both of my dimensions are in meters so now you can go calculate the answer okay so 1.65 times 0 0.8 
and your answer is 1.32 meters squared. Now, if you had just divided the previous answer, right, by 100, you would have seen that you would have got that answer. And what that indicates is that you've only adjusted one of the dimensions to be in meters and not both of the dimensions, okay? So you must do this because this flows, you adjust both dimensions. So effectively, you divide by a thousand twice, one for the one dimension and two for the second dimension. So you could just take your answer here and divide by 100 again, and then you would get the answer. But students seem to struggle with that logic. So just be careful. Okay. Let's continue with this question. We're doing a great job, right? Let's continue. So it says one liter of paint covers 6.9 meters squared. Determine Rounded to two decimal places, so remember that in your mind, the number of liters of paint required to paint the backboard completely. Okay, so we know that we need this much, right? That's just the area of it. But remember, she's painting it in a couple of coats once on the back and twice on the front. So effectively, right, she needs 1.32 times by three because she's got one coat on the back and two coats on the front. Okay, so we're going to times this by three. So this is how much paint she's going to need. Okay, so she's going to need that much. But we know that one liter of paint, it says one liter of paint covers 6.9. So we're going to say, okay, we know we're not going to need a whole liter. We're only going to need this much. Okay, so that's in meters squared. Um, that's for three coats, right? And one liter covers this much. So we say that's the, the area that we want to cover. That's the area that one liter covers. And let's see what our answer is. Three, or well, we can just say answer like that. Remember, there is that function on your calculator. Divided by 6.9. And your answer is 0 0.57. I'm stopping there because they asked for two decimal places. The third decimal place is below five. So we round down. So they're going to need 0 0.57 liters. Why? Because that's how much we needed, right? That's one liter would give me that much. So I say, how much of a liter, right, am I going to need in order to paint 3.96? Well, I'll only need 0 0.57 liters to, to paint the three coats that I need. Okay, well, it's not me that's painting it, Sidi, right? So just be careful with your reasoning there. Let's do the last question for this video. It says, Tsiri stated that only 500 mils, um, only one 500 mil can of paint is sufficient um, to paint the blackboard, blackboard completely, right? With all the coats. Verify with calculations whether her statement is valid. So we're going to convert this into milliliters, right? You should remember that there are a thousand milliliters in one liter. So we take this. 0 0.57, we times it by 1,000, and this is 570 milliliters. Now, 570 milliliters is greater than 500 milliliters, and therefore, city is wrong. Okay? So remember, with these questions, you have to do the math, and then you have to come to a conclusion. Please don't forget to come to a conclusion. That is not what the question is asking. Right. Let's move on to the next part of question three.